Okay, so if you did not watch the previous uh, episode on just the prerequisites to this, well, on the augmented scale and ways to look at it, um, there's uh, so many feels you can get out of certain scale types, and and it's all about execution. And that's what we're focusing around on right now. Um, execution. Okay. Um, in this case, we're going to create kind of like a comical, like picture like a jar jar or something. And I spent last week just create coming up with a quick example. I didn't spend a lot of time on this. It's only to show that specific scales don't always have one specific mood attached to them. Okay, and I'll play a quick uh, aspect of the augmented scale and it sounds devastating, like something's just destroyed like this. <laughs> So you're not walking away with a very pleasant feeling from hearing that or nor even a comical kind of feeling from hearing that, okay? And I'm actually going to break down that example in the next video. I just want to show that this augmented scale and perception is all about the execution and I intentionally made it sound like it, it would belong to like some kind of comical character kind of theme, okay? So let's just go ahead and listen to it. So we're going to break down why this does not sound like action music or devastating music or just very dark. And uh, so what's the, what are the aspects that cause that to sound comical? First of all, it's a simple bass root fifth kind of sound, okay? And these are two notes you can use in the augmented scale. So when you ever have a pulse like this, a very typical pulse, like you could even use a typical pulse, pulse like this. Let's just use the major scale and tricks using like flat third, flat five, kind of. And very typical chromatic harmony you might use with the major scale. So you use that same kind of son concept. You don't feel very serious about it from the get-go. So here's the, here's the opening. We don't feel very serious about this. It's using the augmented scale and chords you can form off of it. And uh, in a pan-diatonic kind of fashion. Using very basic techniques. There's no shame in that non-serious kind of sound to it. And it also, it's kind of implying that we're in C something, but we don't quite know. So the second aspect that makes this sounds comical right off the bat is using this low end tuba as a melody. Okay. And it's actually outlining kind of a minor feel, unlike the top part that uses the major third of the almost C major shape. It almost sounds like it's in harmonic minor, okay? But now it's using the E natural, okay? It's very disjunct. That's another thing that helps. It's a very disjunct sounding melody. So we have this general feeling that we're in C something, but there's all kinds of clashing going on, causing a lot of disjunctness, okay? If we're unsure of the tonality, it's major or minor, we can't really tell. So this is what I mean in the previous video by using the augmented scale in a pan diatonic fashion. Anything goes. Okay, but if you could use, do these specific things like this, this disjunct melody over the top of that kind of comical backing, it's bound to sound comical. It's not going to sound like action music. And this is where you have to use your ear, okay? So that was the tuba melody. And when the tuba melody ends right there, we kind of, uh, right there, we kind of have this shift to the, uh, what feels like an E tonal center. Okay, still using the notes from the augmented scale, but it sounds like an E major with a, a, a flat six. And then that B to E move, it almost sounds like a cadence that's not really existent in the scale, but we're creating one. Okay, 5-1 cadence. It's almost like a 5-1 cadence. So again, when the melody ends, we have this E major kind of shape with a flat six, and then that sounds like a, a cadence to an E by using just the B note that's part of the augmented scale. So let's listen to the first half with these things in mind. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so moving on to the next section. Um, by the way, I did this reduction really fast. If I made a, a mistake in there, I, ha I looked it over many times, but I, I'm pretty sure I did not. So we're going to look at another aspect that helped to maintain this kind of comical kind of uh, th theme for like somebody who's maybe slightly goofy in your, or it could be any situation that ha requires that kind of sound. Well, for one, we have two timbers that are usually never doubled together. The the uh, tuba and a really high flute spaced way apart. This kind of adds to that sound of it's not to be taken serious. So now we do have runs and stuff in like double octaves, but if you don't know what that is, that's that's okay. This is not about orchestration, but uh, in the strings, really creating a lot of motion. Um, but so we're just going to skip past those things because what makes it sound comical is that low tuba with the high flute. So unusual melodic doubling. That's something to take into account. That's That will add to it. Um, so the end, the music does change for a second. It starts to sound like something's going on. So because music does change and you have to change with whatever is going on in whatever you're doing so uh i'm and the other reason was i want to show this pan diatonic kind of thinking with scales that are unique to give you different types of sounds so this kind of sound makes sounds like like something going on so uh, i switch to the b as they root and i just kind of pan diatonically have used my ear to choose what notes are involved in this uh, measured tremolo rise up. I did use an A flat there in the notation, so. Resolving out to this kind of E minor sound. Using that, going from that B to the E, like we're having another cadence but that doesn't actually exist in the scale. So following that, you have this fall down of a grace note kind of moves through the wind groups, okay? It doesn't actually happen like that. That was the easiest way to write it out. It actually happens very disjunct from each other, very much larger uh, distance moves like this. Okay, that's another thing you could do to help achieve comicalness and playfulness. Then it goes to this polychord that we discussed in the, in the previous video. C major over... Uh, B augmented or C major seventh sharp nine whatever you want to call it and then it ends with this kind of the, the main melody just kind of echoing through a bunch of different groups and then on that polychord again or C major seven sharp nine I don't care whichever one you want to call it I mean that's very subjective so let's listen to this section um, remember we're just talking about enharmonic sounds So the rise up in the in that fast uh, measured tremolo uh, is just completely using your ear, and there's no specific chord in mind. It's just meant to sound like something is going on. I mean, the guy could have slipped across the floor and knocked a bunch of stuff over. So let's listen to it. I would say what to get out of this is actually to actually don't be afraid of using typical rhythms like boom chuck boom chuck boom da boom da root fifth root fifth that's okay I mean there's nothing there's no shame in that that's part of the execution and why it sounds comical a disjunct melody in the low end also is helping with that with a, a with an instrument frankly that's not always associated with melody a good choice in this situation may be a bassoon for instance However, by using something like the tuba, it's really established that this is not to be taken serious at all. The other thing to get out of this is, even though you have a scale that's mostly associated with augmented chords, look at the previous video. I'll link it here. 
and the it's part of this playlist where you also look at these scales of what kind of enharmonic sounds you can also get out of them okay so you notice i didn't use the augmented chord all that much it was it showed up here and there but i wasn't really focused on it as focusing on that kind of pan diatonic thinking meaning anything goes and you have to really use your ear for this and kind of let yourself literally just be okay with no rules it doesn't have to fit a certain chord i mean you could literally just stop thinking like that and say anything goes and again that's why it's important to watch the prerequisite video because i explain this process of using anything and harmonic within this scale that can be formed and this is literally not a basics video so i suggest un first understanding normal regular functional harmony first before moving on to stuff like this as I am a firm believer in understanding your basics first before you go into advanced kind of theoretical concepts. Um, thank you for watching and I hope it helps people out.